as every organization has started using cloud as their basic infrastructure, it's very necessary and the key responsibility of every DevOps engineer to ensure how do we automate and scale all the infrastructure needs for the organization. And this is where there are two primary tools which we use heavily in the market for infrastructure management. So that's Terraform and Ansible. And it's always been a confusion for everyone to understand what's the basic difference between Terraform and Ansible and which tool has to be used and when we have to use it. And that's the primary reason for this session is to help you understand the difference between Terraform and Ansible and how do we use it for our basic infrastructure automation. And my name is Adam, let's get into the session. Now, before we kick start in understanding the difference, now both Terraform and Ansible uh, primarily runs on two different concepts. So that's called as infrastructure provisioning and configuration management. So let us first try to understand what is the difference between these principles and then look at the difference of each of the two. So basically, when we say infrastructure provisioning, now whether you take AWS or Azure or GCP, now what happens for your different, different environments, that is your dev, QA, or production environment, all those things that you need to create in cloud is what we call it as infrastructure provisioning. Now, what do you mean by all you need to do? So, so let's say for your production, you might need a bunch of machines in which your applications would be running, or you might also need to create a database to store all your backend data, and at the same time, to interconnect all your applications and machines, you need a typical network, and even you need a separate storage, which could be part of your machine, or it could also be an external storage in which you have to manage different kinds of logs, backup, and data. Now, all these things, what you do is create in your cloud. And that's where infrastructure provisioning is all about creating these different services that you have in the cloud. And not just that, but let's even talk about Kubernetes. Now, one of the important things what we have to take care of is set up a cluster to deploy our application in QA or production. Now, as soon as we say Kubernetes, so you have to take care of the master components, that is your control plane, as well as you also have to take care of the data plane servers. Now, creating all those are also called as infrastructure provisioning. In simple, infrastructure provisioning is all about creating all these components of your cloud in any one of the services is what we typically call it as infrastructure provisioning. Now let's take a real case example to understand it better. So in one scenario, assume I want to run a simple front-end application, and for that application, let's say I'm using AWS as my primary infrastructure, then I need to make sure I need a VPC, which is a private network, and within the VPC, I have a security group which will help me to control the traffic inflow. Same way. Now, the machines that I create has to be part of a load balancer so that as a user, I don't have to worry about which machine to access to run my application. So this is where infrastructure provisioning is about creating things like VPC, security group, load balancer and creating your machines now it's not just that let's say you have a database to be created and it's not just about creating a database but you also have to create a highly available database now whether you are using a service like rds or you're going to take a machine and install your own database and manage now how do you set up everything so this is where for a high availability of database, you need to make sure you have machines in which the master replica is running, and then you also have your secondary replicas running, which is for standby. But whenever we say a database, we also need to have a primary and a read replica to optimize the access of your database. So that's when all those components that you're going to create to ensure you have a database and it is highly available, like the servers, and the security group through which you control the access and 
the backup of all your database, which has to be stored on an S3 bucket. And to run all of them, you need to have a typical private network, which is VPC. And this is when infra provisioning is about handling or creating those services in your cloud. Okay. Now, on the other hand, what is configuration management or ideally it is called as configuring a server now using infrastructure provisioning let's say we create a machine in aws like a ec2 server now what happens after that so your infrastructure provisioning doesn't care anything after that which is inside the server so infra or infrastructure provisioning focuses only on creating those servers or creating those services now this is where whether you are using that machine for your development purpose or your testing purpose or for your application deployment now the servers have to be configured with different things and this is where what do we mean by configuring a machine or configuration of a server so typically you need to install all the applications or the packages that is needed to support your dev or QA or your production activity. Same way, you need to make sure that there are certain services which is already running or you might have to stop the services to ensure your application is running successfully. And you might also have to take up frequent backups, keep updating the OS and the kernel libraries as per your need. And it could also be as simple as creating some specific folders or files using which your application can run. Now, ideally, configuration of a server means all those things that you do inside the server once the server is created, which could be something like installing the application, running the services, or creating some specific files, or even taking an OS backup or an update. Now, what are some of the examples that we can talk about in real time? So assume you have created a machine, or rather I would say you provisioned a machine, and after that, if it has to be used by a developer, then you have to configure the server exactly as per the needs of a dev guy. And this is where you might have to install some packages like Git, some specific version of Java, or let's say they also need database and there's a specific version of a database that you have to use. And along with it, you might also have to install some specific IDE, which helps him to do his development in a better way. So this is what we call it as configuring a server to a dev need same way let's say i have another machine which i have to use it for my builds to support my ci cd now in that case let's say the machine has to be installed with a specific version of git and to do the compilation you need a specific version of java and to let's say build a java based application you also need maven and to create a deliverable like a deployable artifact, you might also need Docker and Docker Compose. And this is when taking a machine and making sure all these are installed and running is what we call it as a build server configuration. So now if you understand the difference, infrastructure provisioning is about creating those services in cloud, whereas configuring a server is about after you create the server, how do you make sure the server has everything that you need in terms of an application or a service running or a particular file or a folder available. So with that basics, now let's try to understand how do we differentiate Terraform versus Ansible. So let's talk about a category. So the first difference between Ansible and Terraform is based on the tool category. So if you talk about Terraform, so Terraform is an infrastructure provisioning tool, whereas Ansible is a configuration management tool. So what should come to your mind from now onwards is, so if there is a requirement in which you go to AWS or Azure and you want to create a machine or you want to create a network or you want to create a database or even you have to create a small network, then think of using Terraform because Terraform works on the concept called infrastructure provisioning. Whereas you have a machine available and inside the machine you want to configure it for different purposes like for dev purpose or QA or production or deployment, then use Ansible to configure that. So that's where 
Terraform is an infrastructure provisioning tool and Ansible is a configuration management tool. Second category. Now, whenever we talk about any tool in DevOps, there's actually some kind of language that we use to tell the syntax on how the tool works. And this is where, when we talk about Terraform, Terraform completely works on a declarative approach where using the TF files or the Terraform configuration file, you tell the desired state of what you want to provision and Terraform will take care of it. And for this, Terraform uses HashiCorp language or HCL. On the other side, Ansible follows procedural approach. So it's not completely declarative, but you will kind of create some YAML file and you give the input on what is the state of the machine that you want and Ansible will be automating it. And Ansible completely runs using Python. Then the third difference is the lifecycle management. Now, what do you mean by lifecycle? So especially when we talk about creating an infra or provisioning the infra, now you create it and at some point of time you go ahead and destroy it. Now this is when Terraform completely depends on a lifecycle management. And that's where when you start working with Terraform, you would be using different workflow or commands like Terraform init, Terraform plan, and Terraform destroy. Wherein you create the same infra and then at any time you can also destroy them. And for all these, Terraform stores the data. Or in other way, if Terraform is creating some machine or some database or some network, it stores all the information about those resources into a file which is called a state file. And this is how we actually can create and destroy those resources at any point of time, which is what we call it as a life cycle management. On the other hand, Ansible doesn't have any life cycle management, which means you cannot do a destroy. So all you will be doing is you go to a machine and you just make sure whether the machine has a particular application or a service or a file that you need and help you to create it or remove it. And for this, Ansible doesn't store any information into a state file. Now, this is one of the primary reasons why Terraform is popular for infrastructure provisioning, whereas Ansible shouldn't be used much to create your infrastructure because if you try to let's say create a machine using ansible it can help you to create but every time you run ansible it will go ahead and start creating new new machines whereas the same if you try with terraform once you create it has a life cycle so it will say on the neck and mind you wanted a machine and that machine is available so i don't have to recreate it okay so this is where the main other difference is Terraform maintains a state file, whereas Ansible doesn't maintain a state file. Then, what is the kind of approach or what we call it as the automation approach that these two use? Now, Terraform works on an approach called immutable infrastructure, whereas Ansible works on an approach called mutable infra. So what's the difference between these two? So if you see, if there is a machine, Ansible will make sure the machine is in the same state. So at any time, Ansible allows you to keep updating the same machine again and again, depending on what is the state you want. Whereas if you take Terraform, Terraform always recreates the infrastructure. So let's say you created a machine and you did some changes in the configuration and you run Terraform, Terraform will not update the same machine. It will try to recreate the resources. And this is where Terraform follows immutable infra because it replaces the whole infra and ensures that you have a steady state of your infra. Whereas Ansible allows you to keep modifying on top of what is available. And that's where Ansible follows mutable infrastructure because it allows you to change on an existing machine then another key difference and this time the benefit goes to ansible is because ansible has 
a templating engine called Jinja using which you will be able to configure different kind of machines with different applications. So that's where if you have a requirement where you want to configure different applications like let's say different Apache or Nginx at that time, think of using Ansible because it has a better way to handle and support templating. Now on the other side, Terraform doesn't have much of templating, but still it supports in a limited way. And by now you should be very clear on what is the purpose, right? And this is where whenever you want to create any kind of services like a database or a machine or a storage or a network on cloud, then think of using Terraform, okay? Whereas when should we use Ansible is you already have a machine which is created by Terraform and that machine, if you want to configure and make sure that it has a particular state so that a dev or a QA can start working on it, then we should be using Ansible. So that way Terraform is for creating the services and Ansible is for configuring the machine which is already created by Terraform. So this leads us to the last question is, okay, now for a company, we need both Terraform and Ansible, but which tool to use for what purpose? So that's something very much we need to understand. So now, if you clearly understand, there's a difference between infrastructure provisioning and configuring a server. And this is where, if your need is for creating or managing those services, and then use Terraform to handle. But once the machine is created, especially once the machine is created, and if you want to configure the machine with different applications and services, then you use Ansible. However, as a DevOps engineer, we will be required to do end-to-end -end automation. So that's where, whether it's an existing client or a new client, you might have to create an infrastructure as well as configure and maintain the server state anytime. So this is where, think about initially using Terraform to create those infrastructure and machine. And after that, think of using Ansible to configure those servers to make sure the state is maintained at any point of time. So this is how, as a DevOps engineer, you need to use both the tools, but the basic difference is, are you creating the services or do you have a requirement to configure the machine and make sure the state of the machine is already in the same state? So with that, thanks for joining and my name is Adam.